Hey, what is up everyone? Philip here bringing you another review. Today we're gonna be checking out another Keychron keyboard and this is their low profile Keychron K1 RGB edition. So if you're not familiar with the brand Keychron, they make many different uh, mechanical keyboards and this is their slim version. They make a thicker one, the Keychron K2, which is very popular. And this is their less popular keyboard that's uh, slim. And this one here is missing the number pad, which makes it a 10 keyless or TLK keyboard. And it makes it a little bit more compact than keyboards with a number pad, which is really nice if you wanna save some space on your desk. So what makes the Keychron keyboard lineup really special is they are fully Mac and Windows compatible. They have a little switch up here that we'll be talking a little later in the video. And you can also connect up to three devices to a keyboard. So you can connect your Mac, your Windows, and your phone to one keyboard, and you can swap around them on the fly with a click of a button. So now that we finished the brief overview of this keyboard, let's jump in and check out what was in the box when you actually received the product. So when you receive this Keychron keyboard right here, you're gonna get a keyboard, of course. Depending on what you order, you're either gonna get the number pad version or the TLK version. And then you're gonna get a USB-A to USB-C charging cable. You can charge it while the battery is dead. And then when it's done charging, you can unplug it and then continue to use it wirelessly. We'll cover the battery life a little bit more later in the video. You also get a few extra keycaps for Windows or Mac, depending on which device you'll be using, which can easily be swapped out. And to swap them out, you're gonna also have this keyboard puller that's included, which makes it a little bit easier if you wanna swap the keys out or pull your keys out and just clean the keyboard. And last but not least, you're gonna have an instruction manual that shows you how to use some of the functions of the keyboard. I would keep this handy for a little bit until you get used to how to use this keyboard because it shows you how to uh, switch between the lighting settings and how to connect different devices and a few other things. So now that we covered what was inside the box, let's talk a little bit about the design and build quality of this keyboard. So when I pulled this keyboard out of the box, I was very impressed with the weight and the build quality of the keyboard. It's made of a full fully aluminum material, which really makes it feel like it's not a cheap product despite its price, which is very affordable. And then the keycaps themselves, they are made of a durable plastic material, so it doesn't really feel cheap at all. I'm very impressed overall with the build quality of the keyboard. On the back of the keyboard, each corner has one millimeter rubber feet that help grip the keyboard to your desk, which is gonna be really handy while you're typing and doing your thing. Unfortunately, there are no leg adjusters, but I think that's okay because this keyboard is trying to be a slim keyboard and they don't want it to prop up really high. And another interesting thing about this keyboard is that it's a very slim, low profile build. The height of this keyboard at the lower part where your fingers kind of go on the keyboard in the beginning part, that goes up about 18 millimeters, which is really, really thin. And if you compare it to the Keychron K2, which is the thicker mechanical keyboard with the little red escape key, that one is 38 millimeters tall. So from 17 to 38, that's a little more than double. So this thing is twice as thin as the K2. And in my personal opinion, I am a huge fan of that because I don't like it when my hands crawl up so high on the keyboard because it's not as comfortable for me and you have to get a palm rest which kind of makes your setup a little, I don't know, doesn't look as clean and minimal. So I really do like this K1 personally more than the K2. Anyways, enough about comparing the two keyboards. I may make a comparison video between the K1 and the K2 in the near future. But in the meantime, let's move on with this keyboard. And now we're gonna talk a little bit about the RGB lights. So if I turn them on over here, you're not really gonna see that it's super bright in the video because I have so many bright lights here. The camera does not do justice, but it is a lot brighter in person. Okay, now that we covered the lights, let's talk a little bit about the clickiness of this keyboard. So this is a blue switch keyboard and they make this keyboard in the blue switches as well as the red. So the blues are a little more clicky and tactile feeling and the reds are kind of like a more subtle transition uh, between the keyboard when you actually press the key and it goes down to the keyboard. So here's what the blues actually sound like. I'm gonna do a little typing test here. It's not a very good demonstration, but we'll go ahead and do it. So let's type something. button mashing. So as you can see, it's a pretty clicky feel. And the reds, I don't have them on me, but they're kind of similar, but a lot more quiet. 
So if you're okay with the loudness and you like the clickiness, the blues are definitely cool. But if uh, having some form of level of quietness is needed for your space, then I would recommend going with the reds. And then in terms of the key travel time, it is it is a 2.5 millimeter travel time. So what that means is when you push down on the key, it travels down 2.5 millimeters. And that's a pretty low travel time and you don't have to like dig your fingers in when you push the key. So it's like a pretty subtle click, not a far travel time. And you actually register the key and then it, you know, processes and you know, the data gets transferred to your computer. Now that we covered the aesthetics and a few of the physical functionalities like the keys, let's talk a little bit about the functionality of this keyboard. So on the side, or actually on the top, you're gonna notice um, a few little switches here. So one of the switches are the connection type. So you have off, Bluetooth, and cable. So off is pretty straightforward. It turns the keyboard off. And a little side thing to note is this keyboard will automatically shut off after 10 minutes of use. And this is optional, you can configure it by clicking a certain key combination to turn this feature off and it can always be on. So I would recommend keeping it on because it's, you know, it'll just preserve the battery life a little more. Next is the Bluetooth connection. The Bluetooth is pretty straightforward. You can connect up to three devices to this keyboard and to switch between them, you just hold the function key and then push the number one, two, or three. And when you push a new uh, number, it's gonna ask you to connect the device. There's gonna be a little blue light that is blinking the Bluetooth light over here. And that's basically gonna uh, give you the ability to connect your Windows, your Mac, your phone, and any device that you'd like. So a little bit about the battery life of this keyboard. It'll last you for about a week before the battery dies. Pro tip, if you turn the lights off, it'll last you for about a month. So if you really need that battery life, I would recommend turning off the lights to preserve the battery. But if you're in a setup that is stationary, like a desk setup and you're not traveling a lot, I would just recommend keeping the lights on because it looks a lot nicer and you can see the keycaps in low light. And next switch is the operating system switcher key. So basically what this is gonna do is give you the ability to connect to either Windows or Mac and basically it's pretty straightforward. If you switch it to Windows, the keyboard functionality is gonna function like a Windows keyboard. And if you switch it to Mac, it'll function like a Mac keyboard. So is this keyboard worth it? Well, it comes down to a few things. There is a lot of competition out there with a lot of different options, but the thing that really stands out with this keyboard here is that it's a very slim, low profile keyboard. If that's something that's uh, interesting to you, then this is probably one of the only keyboards I can personally recommend because this thing has pretty much all the features most keyboards have. You can connect between different devices, up to three devices. You can switch between Windows mode and PC mode, and then you also have the RGB lights. And you really like, it literally hits all the spots, this keyboard, for a low profile keyboard. And if that's something you're interested in, any of those features, this keyboard is definitely worth it, especially considering the price point. This thing goes for $75 at the time of making this video, which is extremely cheap. Like for how much features you're getting, I think that is like a really good deal. So if you're interested in getting this keyboard, I will leave a link down in the description below. Make sure you guys click that link and check out the keyboard specs and you guys can decide whether you wanna get it or not. As for me, I'm going to be using this keyboard as my main keyboard moving forward. I really like um, the other gaming keyboard, the Logitech G915, I reviewed that a while ago. That was also a nice keyboard because it was a low profile mechanical keyboard. But the thing I didn't like about it was that it was a full size keyboard and it just felt really wide to me. I kind of wanted something a little more slim and this one is slim here. And oh, and another thing is I also switch between Mac and PC a lot. And this keyboard can switch between Mac and PC, which makes it even more like awesome for my specific needs. So anyways, with all that being said, thank you for watching this video. If you wanna stay in the loop with uh, any tech news that's happening, make sure you guys click that subscribe button and I will keep you guys in the loop. All right, thank you for watching. I'll catch you next time.